Hi friends, welcome to Wafa Studies YouTube channel. This is part 102 in Azure Data Factory playlist. In this video, we are continuing the pagination rules in copy activity. So in our previous video also, we have discussed about pagination rules where your next page URL will come as part of the response. But in this video, we will be discussing about what if you have to control the pagination using the query parameters where you want to pass data dynamically into query parameters. I will take similar API what I used in my previous video. I won't take the next property in the response. I will completely rely on these query parameters and I will explain this example. So before watching this video, I would encourage you if you want to watch the previous video, then please do that because you will get most out of this video. So let me explain you the requirement first. So let's go to notepad. Here I have already copied URLs. So let me copy this URL and then let me go to browser and in the browser, let me try to issue a get request here. If you closely observe this API has two query parameters. One is limit. Another one is offset. Okay. And when I hit enter, it's like a get request. It will get me results array. So don't think about these properties. What you are seeing here, uh, only think about this one. You can see this API totally has 1279 records. Okay. 1279 records are available. And using this limit property, I am saying give me only 20 records. If you see here from record 1 to record 20. Okay. Give me only 20 records. Uh, and let's assume like this is my first page. So now I want to take the next set of 20 records. That means from 21 to 40. Then what I have to do in the offset in the offset, I need to do offset 20. Why? Because previously I have already taken the 20 records. Now offset the 20 and then give next to 20 records because I am using limit 20. So now when I hit enter, it will give me records from 21 to 40. You can clearly see here, right? Similarly, now this is like a second page. Now I want to take the records from the third page. So then what I have to do again, same thing. This time offset will become 40 and then limit to 20. That means next to 20 records exclude first to 40 records, then give me the next to 20 records. So that means 41 to 60. You can clearly see here. Now we are getting from 41 to if I scroll down till 60. So this way using this query parameter, we can control the pagination. So whatever the URLs you are seeing here, think like these are like your pages. So this is like a first page and this is like a second page and this is like a third page and this is like a fourth page. Think like that. Now, for some reason, if you closely observe, everything is same here, but only this offset query parameter value is dynamically changing. So for every page, this value should change dynamically. So how to implement this as a pagination rules? using copy activity and making the API calls and fetching all 1279 records because that's what I said, right? If you go back to my browser, this API contains totally 1279 records. So let me practically implement this and show you. So for that, if you see here, we should use this inside pagination rules, use these query parameters and create a variable called offset in the URL and pass the values. Let me practically explain you so that you will get most sense of it. So let me go to this data factory, create a new pipeline and then let me take copy activity onto data frame. So I'm using a copy activity here. Okay. Now if I see here under source, I want to use the rest API data set, which makes API call to my API. So let me create a new data set here. Let me select rest as a connector, continue and here. Let me create a new linked service for my API and here the base URL is the important thing. If you see here, this is the entire URL, right? So let me copy this. Let's try to use, uh, let me change the authentication to anonymous. Let's use this base URL completely. If you closely observe here, you can see what I am doing. I am hard coding everything, but what I said, this offset value should be dynamic, right? So this offset value should be dynamic. I cannot hard code like zero. If I do that, it will only give me first 20 records. What about the next pages next to 20? 
So for that, this value should be dynamic. Wherever you have that dynamic nature, use this curly braces and create one variable there. So I am creating a variable called offset here. And from the pagination rules, I will be passing values dynamically 20, 20 into this offset variable. So in the first API call, it should take 0. In the second API call, it should take 20. In the third API call, it should take 40, something like that. I am going to make it dynamic using the pagination rule. Let me show you how it is. So let me zoom out here and let me hit test connection to make sure my API test connection is successful or not. So once I hit the test connection, we need to make sure. Whenever we create some linked services, make sure your test connection is successful. Let me hit create button to create this linked service and OK button to create this data set. So, so far we are good. We created a data set. And now here under pagination rules, you see there is some default one. You can keep it or you can delete it. And now let me create a new pagination rule. So if you remember what I did, I created here a variable called offset, right? So and this is part of my query parameters, right? So what I can do here, I can use that query parameters option here from this drop down. So let me take the query parameters here. So let me zoom out little bit. And here, let me take the query parameters. Okay. And then in, if, you, if you closely remember, I, I have taken a query parameters that is fine. But what I have to enter here, you need to enter here your variable name. So this is my variable name, which I declared inside the linked service. So let me copy that and let me paste it here. So, so far it is good. Now, so far it is good. But what I said is I want to use this uh, range of values, right? It should be like 0, 20, 40, 60. And I said my API has totally 1279 rows. We know that, right? So what we can do it here is here I can select there is something called range. So under under value, you select something called range actually. So select the range and here you mention start range and end range. So start range should be zero and I have totally 1279 records, right? So use that 1279 as end range and in the offset, you can use 20 as a value because we are using limit as a 20, right? So 20, 20, it has to minus. So if you declare range like this from zero, it will start. Then it will do minus 20. Uh, I mean, offset is 20. So next to 20, it will use then again 20, 40, again 20, 60. So that way, this range will supply the uh, offset values to my API to perform the pagination accordingly. So that's it. So once you've done this, maybe I want to take all this data into blob storage as a CSV file. So let me use a data set. If I open this data set, it is pointing to sample container output folder and api data data.csv file okay so i already have that path here so let me close this here if we, if you see here i am right now under sample container under output folder there is already one api data.csv file let me delete this for now and uh, let's wait for the blob to get delete here see blob got deleted successfully now i used this as a data set into my sync tab of copy activity under source, I use the paginations. I declared offset variable and I am supplying range because I want to pass this uh, offset values dynamically using this offset variable. So I, I, I am done with everything. Okay. So once you implement these paginations, always it is a good habit. Click this JSON view source code icon and try to make sure whether your values are reflected into JSON also or not. Sometimes it is not reflecting if you are doing it. So make sure it is reflecting. Then try to execute your pipeline. So I hit the debug execution now and let's wait for this pipeline execution to complete. Once the execution completes, it should create API data.csv file and that file should have 1279 rows, right? So that's what the total number of rows, right? It has to take 20, 20 rows every time and it has to fetch all the 1279 rows. So let's wait for the execution of the copy activity to complete here. It's completed. Now, if I go here and if I hit refresh button, I should see API data.csv file. You can see here. Let me open this file and inside the file, let me click this edit tab. And if you closely observe, I got all the OK. Sorry. So I got count next and previous columns. I haven't got other columns. The reason is let me go to copy activity under mappings. I need to import the mappings first 
and I need to delete that. So what I said, I want to take only these rows. I don't want all these properties, right? So under mappings, import everything and here under collection reference, use this results array because results is a array which I want to flatten and by after flattening name and URL should be columns. Okay, then delete all this whatever you are seeing here. Even delete this result which has which has a zero index here. So delete everything and then let's try to re-import the schema because I selected the collection reference. This time if I re-import it will come in this fashion. Delete this count, next, previous properties. I want to take only name and URL properties as name column and URL column. All set. Now let me hit debug button to execute this and let's see. Let's wait for the pipeline execution to complete. This time I should see the data. So let me close this here. Let me refresh this folder again. We have to wait for the pipeline execution to complete here actually. So let's wait for it. See pipeline executed successfully. Now let me refresh it. I can see apdata.csv file. If I go inside and if I go under edit button, I should be seeing name and URL columns. And if I scroll down, see totally 1280 rows in which first row is columns. So if you remove that, total number of rows are 1279 what we got, right? So that means my API is able to make all the API calls in this fashion and fetch all the rows and finally load the data as a CSV file as well. So the same thing I have explained here, the same setting. So one more thing, not only query parameter, you can even use absolute URL also here. You can try by yourself because absolute parameter means, I mean absolute URL means what I said in my private video, right? The complete URL is called absolute URL. That means if I go to note back from here to here, the complete URL is called absolute URL. So even you can use absolute URL as a uh, value inside the page. I mean as a name inside the pagination rules and you can still do the same thing. You can still select the range here and pass range 0 to 1279 with offset and still you can execute the same thing okay both works but using query parameters will be more readable and more sensible because these are all like query parameters right so that's why i used it so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel press the bell icon to get the notifications whenever i add videos thank you so much